Denny Hamlin lost another shot at another championship in NASCAR again. Again? Again. And with it, we yet again have another way that Denny Hamlin came oh so close but was still so far away. Leading into 2023, Hamlin had qualified for the Final Four three of the last four seasons, with his 2022 campaign ending in heartbreaking fashion and relegating him to a fifth-place points finish, with only the Hail Melon keeping him out. But entering the season at 42 years old, it was only a matter of time before natural regression would start to set in. While not necessarily being known, it does feel like the clock has been ticking down. And early on, while having fast cars and runs, the season seemed to have a same distraction left over from 2022. Ross Chastain. This would cost Denny 25 points and put a damper even more on the season's start. While fast, the finishes would remain inconsistent. For one reason or another, it always was something. That was until Kansas. All day, Hamlin was quick. The Toyotas in general were quick. And so was Kyle Larson's Hendrick Chevy. But as the laps wound down, Larson led while Denny had the speed in second and was running him down. <laughs> All right, off turn four, white flag in the air. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. He's going to have one more chance getting into three. That's where it's going to come. He's right to the bumper of him. Take him now. Take him now. He's going to get to him, get him loose. He is loose. Got him loose. He got to wiggling. They're going to be side by side. But then he had to lift. He did. Oh, he oh, turned him! Clear, clear, and Larson's in the wall. Barely oh my gosh. Him. Barely tapped him. Run, Denny. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Denny Hamlin comes sailing off turn number four. Sure did. To the checkered flag. Hamlin wins Kansas. Friends off the track, rivals on it. I was actually standing in the 11 pit during this battle, and to say it was a unique experience is a bit of an understatement. Half the people around Hamlin's pit were celebrating after the race, while a lot of others seemed to be bewildered more than anything. Of course, most wouldn't remember this due to that other incident that happened that race, but Hamlin's next run in with a Hendrick driver would get the full spotlight. Hamlin had to take evasive action to the inside and get by. Oh, trouble front straight away. Hard in the wall goes Hamlin. Chase and Elliott. Chase down. Elliott. Left of your screen. The inside of Chase. Gets loose. You see him lift out of the gas. The flames crowded Chase. Got into him. But they saw Ooh. some retaliation Man. there. Or did Keslowski get into the left rear corner of Elliott there? I saw Elliot, tried to you check see up. Elliot lose his nose and lift out of the gas. Flames come out of the pipes, yep. chase it up, squeeze Chase into the wall, and I think uh, the rest is self-explanatory. You know this is a major screw-up when NASCAR suspends its most popular driver. Luckily for Denny, his Kansas win nabbed him a playoff spot already. Thing is, the HMS vs. Denny drama was not even close to being done as the Destructive Trilogy would be resuming with the newfound rivalry with Kyle Larson, this time at Pocono. Pace car off, it'll be seven laps, a sprint to the finish, and the crowd is loving it here at Pocono. Good push at the outside line. Reddick is not to the back of the 19. The outside line's gonna have to speed the momentum down into turn one. Reddick not even close to the back of the 19. The 11 clears him. And now here comes Denny Hamlin to the inside for the lead through one. He runs the five wide, almost into the fence. Up into the wall with the five, and now the momentum. Behind them, with the 19 of Martrex Jr., Larson loses the lead. Hamlin's out front. Oh, we got a crash. 
While this was a big talking point during the season, it wouldn't amount to much. Unfortunate for how fun the discussion it was and what it would spark in the moment, but going into the playoffs, Hamlin would have a spark with the third seed, right behind teammate Martin Truex Jr. and William Byron. And starting out at Darlington, he would have the best way possible for the most part, or at least for the majority of the race, as he was running up front leading laps and winning stages. Unfortunately, he came home 25th after having a loose wheel under green flag pit stops with 94 to go, stopping him from a dominant win. But with him scoring those great stage points and a second place finish at Kansas the next week, he would only punctuate it all with a win at Bristol. It's one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Denny Hamlin, the 42-year-old from Chesterfield, Virginia, has put together an amazing race. He's led 142 laps, and he wins the night race at Bristol. Helmet has come off. He's climbing out of the car, Marty. Over 100,000 people here at Bristol Motor Speedway tonight. Is something different with the 11 team this year, though? It's our year. I just feel like we've got it all put together. It's we got the speed, every single type of racetrack, and you know, nothing to stop us at this point. So, are these fans' motivation for you? There's a lot of booze out there. Hey, hey. I beat your favorite driver. And who would that be? All of them. At this point, Hamlin was at a season high in confidence, to the point of possible overconfidence. But who could blame him on this one? And who could blame his fans for feeling the same way? He'd follow it up with a fifth place run at Texas and a third place run at Talladega. He was so good that his 37th place finish at the Roval didn't matter because he had eight stage points already and was so far ahead, he had already locked up a spot in the round of eight. With the pressure mounting up, the remaining contenders would perform better. And Hamlin's 10th place finish with 11 stage points would only put him two points to the good with three races remaining in the season. So it was even more important that he added stage points during the race and had a great finish set as well. Nothing could stop him now. Those two continue to fight for third. Bell and Byron in front of them by a second. And behind this, Truex on those tires, he's gone. Oh, oh into the wall hard as the 11. Denny Hamlin hard into the wall in turn one. Look at this man, this team. A team, a driver, with the full weight of what just happened weighing over them. Possibly the best chance at Hamlin's first championship. And now it's all stuck in the balance and he'd have to ball out at his hometown stomping grounds. The Martinsville Speedway. The penultimate race coming down between he and Ryan Blaney for the win. And while Blaney had the edge, both did actually look set to make it because of the putrid performance of William Byron, who was outside of the top 25 at one point. But as the race drew to a close, Hamlin was needing to charge up through the pack due to differing strategies. Byron was doing just enough to get the edge over Hamlin. And while different drivers would pit, it only would get worse for Denny and better for Byron, as Denny had already passed these guys, but of course Byron was behind them. Even with a third place run, even after leading the most laps at 156, even after all the confidence in the world, Hamlin would miss by eight points. To say it was devastating for fans of the 11, well, it's an understatement because this one feels different. Going into 2024, Hamlin is going to be 43 years old. And while it's not the end of the line for a NASCAR driver, it's another missed opportunity in an ever-shortening list of true opportunities. And it makes many wonder, what if Denny just could have closed the deal out at Martinsville? What if he hadn't popped the wall at Homestead? What if, in 2023, Denny Hamlin captured his missing ring?